So uh, here we are today back in our conversations to making Brand Connect. And today I have um, somebody that is very special and very close to me. Also, I had the opportunity to work with him in Coca-Cola till eight years ago, but through the journey we had together, trying to understand better the consumer, we also find out that for a very little period of time, we were at the same university in Rome. So now I'm giving you a lot of details about my friend Luca, Luca Gentile. He is an amazing Italian, one of my best friends and a very dearest colleague. In this moment, he's working in Giovanni Pasticcio as the Global Consumer and Market Insights. And for me, such a pleasure having him today because it was a long time since we didn't do anything together. So how are you, Luca? Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you really for inviting me here. I'm, uh, I'm fine and uh, very, very happy for, uh, for talking to you. It's always a pleasure, especially this time. It's a lot, actually. I, we always learn something and we always discover something. So I'm a bit worried what is going to be unlocked today in our conversation. But let's, let's go. So we were so, discussing about we were discussing about what to share and we had a very nice conversation the other day about the one of the key things that are going around because everybody is speaking about the foodies, the food, what is food, what is not, what it means, what's happening with the COVID, what are the people doing, they are cooking, not cooking, are gonna stay cooking. So we think there is kind of a lot of information there. So we thought that it might be good to have a conversation about the evolution of the food and what it means. So I guess the first question will be, is food just a need? <laughs> Thank you, Begonia. I think it's a very, very good question. And, uh, and it's a bit more complex than uh, somebody might think about. Because uh, food, for sure, starts as a, as a need. Because everybody needs to be fed. Uh, but then we can consider it uh, something like also uh, a need at a superior level. If we think about, for instance, on the measure of scale, we know that there are higher level of needs. The needs to be considered by the others, you need to be to realize yourself, to be creative or whatever. And the food can fulfill all these needs at all these levels. Because, I mean, when you share the food, even when you have a normal dinner with your family, with your friends, you share you share something with them and you're happy for them, you can consider with them if you go to a special restaurant or you buy, for instance, some great fish or whatever, you gain a lot of, you get a lot of consideration from the other people. That's uh, good also. And finally, I would say food can be also the, a way to express your creativity. Cooking, for instance, or uh, trying to mix uh, different recipes uh, in the same meal. So I think that it's much more than a food. It, it, than a need. The food is much more than a simple functional need. It's something that is more comprehensive and uh, it touches the soul of everybody, in my opinion. Uh, of course, as I'm Spanish speaking with an Italian, uh, I cannot agree more with what you are saying because I think in our culture, especially as in other many cultures, uh, the food is much more than feeding yourself. Yeah, uh, I, I tend to believe myself is somebody that lives for eating, not eats for living, uh, which is really is something that makes me very, very happy. You know, it is also my belief that I'm a happy person because I love eating and you eat three times a day. So at least I'm happy three times a day. So that's for me a, a life motive. But I guess for the people that are not necessarily like you and me, the food has not only become, as you said, a need, but also there is the discussion to go to stream. It is a culture thing, or is really just a trend or a fashion that is there about speaking about food so much. Now you see a lot of things in Instagram, everybody takes photos, you go to a friend with a restaurant, and before you can eat, they are like, wait, wait, let me take a photo. I'm like, I love food. I don't love pictures of food. I love eating the food. So what do you think is going on about the people not eating and taking photos? 
<laughs> I think that the relationship between food and culture is uh, is twofold because obviously the, the the preferred food in each place is an expression of the local culture in my opinion because if we think about the Mediterranean uh, places like Italy, Greece, Spain, the food has a lot of colors, there are a lot of fresh ingredients. It's uh, it's very connected to the behavior of the person, the attitude, uh, also the weather, and it's, it's on the places, so there are a lot of colors. But if we think about the, for instance, the Northern Europe, where the conditions are totally different, obviously also the food is totally different. And, this is so, so driven by the attitude of the person that are a bit, uh, maybe a little less open, I would say, and they have different conditions, they share, but not, uh, for instance, in the outer room. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that is different. And it was very, very true, in, uh, especially in the past. Now everything is becoming a bit more confusing because uh, uh, because the globalization as a trend, it's also affecting the food. So uh, the, the, the food now is not only, totally, in each place, is not only totally the expression of the local culture, but it's also impacted by, the, by what happens in other countries. And so this obviously affects also the local culture, because if you are more open to the food, also your culture, they are more open to the changes coming from uh, other parts of the world. So just, just uh, think about an example. I mean, uh, if, uh, if I think a typical Spanish uh, recipe is paella or typical in Italy is pizza and pasta, but if you go around the world, you see a lot of restaurants that give you something that maybe you never uh, call paella, I assume. Or for instance, in the States, a lot of people eat uh, pizza with apple pie. And in Italy, you say that uh, you, you are breaking some religion for this. So in my opinion, for sure, it's a, food is a culture. Food is part of the culture, yes. In the past, it was made an expression of the local culture. But now, with the globalization, different ingredients, different residents, a lot of contamination is coming. So uh, it's something that, uh, that, is, uh, that is changing what we had in mind up to a lot of years, a few years ago. What do you think about it? What is your experience on that? Uh, I, I'm not a good cook. I shouldn't say it uh, around. So, so I'm not a good cook, but I'm a good eater which I think is as valuable. You know, everybody speaks about the cook people. I think the ones that eat and really enjoy, we should also be recognized and rewarded. I said so. Uh, for me, paella is paella. So when I go to a place, in fact, in my case, uh, my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, food or is uh, octopus from the north of Spain where I'm from. I only take it there, you know. People bring me to places to say, oh, you love octopus, so let's go. I'm like, no, I love my octopus. So I understand what you say about globalization, whatever, but I'm much more traditional. Uh, my octopus is my octopus, let's say. So I think I tend to disagree a little bit of those people playing with my food in a way. What is your favorite uh, food? Pasta, whatever, or any surprise? I would say pizza. Pizza, but uh, traditional pizza to me as well. If you give me <laughs> some pizza with uh, apple pie or pepper or whatever, uh, it's, it's really to me, it's terrible. <laughs> but uh, pizza and pasta for sure are my best, uh, <laughs> my best, my best favorite. Food, so, yeah. so we are not so different, but there are a lot of things happening in the food and there are a lot of trends and things moving there and there is much more than just the taste or the culture around it. So what are, in your opinion, the most relevant trends in the food that are going out in the last years? Uh, actually, there are a lot. We already talked about the contamination. And uh, I think that 
Something that it's also interesting is the, the attention to the healthy food, because people want to avoid the, let's say, the bad ingredients like the sugar, the salt, the fat, the, we need something that is free from or whatever. And to me, it's, it's something that I understand, but to me, it's like an obsession because actually in a lot of cases, you are focused on uh, avoiding normal ingredients because salt is not the L. And maybe uh, in the half an hour later, you start uh, eating chocolate or uh, starting uh, eating something that is also terrible for your health. So honestly, it's, uh, it's true that we have a lot of chefs uh, in, the, in the point of sales with a lot of this healthy food, but all in all, I'm not sure that uh, we have all these people that are so consistent with the consumption. In a lot of occasions, my, my perception is that, okay, I want to be in peace with my conscience, conscience. I want to avoid any regret. I did this and I suffered, and now I deserve to have something that is totally unhealthy. <laughs> and <laughs> then, so, and uh, this is one trend for sure. Uh, another one that's, uh, in my opinion, it's um, a bit more important uh, also is the, it's the snacking and grazing of everything. Because as this is driven by the fact that people have always has less time. They don't have time, they get to run anytime. People have to do 10 activities a day. You can uh, lose the trend, lose the momentum, you know, whatever it is. And so, in a lot of occasions, it's, uh, it's uh, easy if you eat something uh, in an easier way, a small quantity, and you are fine. And you see that it's not only about of chocolate or whatever. Everything now is, uh, is like uh, the neck, the nuts, the pizza, the small biscuits, whatever. And uh, this, for sure, it's, uh, to me, it's an important trend. But honestly, if I have to say, it's not something that I like, because in my opinion, uh, and then you tell me also later what you think. It's like that uh, the timing is, is much more important than the food that uh, you are choosing. At the end, the food is coming back to the original uh, functional need, just a basic need, then you're losing everything that makes you happy. That is sharing, uh, taking some time for you, and uh, using your creativity, enjoy a bit your life. If you are uh, just taking a snack for meals, I don't see any anything happy on that. I don't know what is your opinion on that. Uh, I, before coming to London, I have to be honest, I will be exactly where you are. But then, uh, and then when you arrive from a country like Spain, and you discover things like people that don't have lunch, they just stay in front of their computer with chips and something that they call a sandwich that can be anything. Uh, you are like poor people, you know. But then it's true that they then have like more interactions in terms of more stops, um, eating more and more, uh, small, smaller quantities more times that I'm finding it more healthier than when I was in Spain, that it was much more, too much the food. You know, here I'm snacking more. In my case, it's more healthy because I'm not into the chips move, uh, chips kind of lover. So for me, it's, it's, it's better. In fact, I feel better like that. And by the way, I'm becoming, a, yeah, I'm becoming really much more into a small pieces several times, but I'm not a cook. So that kind of the magic of being there with the ingredients, whatever, in the moment I say to my children, today mommy cooks, they are like, oh no, please mommy, phone Uber, please mommy, phone Uber. Yeah, so I'm not a good example, I guess. What about the Ubers of the life and all those movements about your restaurant comes home? How is that affecting your opinion, the food? All the Ubers and the eats and the Uber foods or whatever. No. People ordering from yeah, uh... the restaurants. 
Yeah, to me it's uh, it's affecting a lot because the 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 consumption is totally is totally changing because uh, now the you tend to order you tend to go less to the restaurant for a lot of good reason the safety the time or whatever and you you are less relaxed currently and uh, and why and and then you you take you tend to take a lot of uh, ready food, uh, food that is already ready to, to, be, to be brought um, at home. It's something that it's easier, actually. It allows you to, to save some time. But also, I mean, that for the restaurant, I think for everything uh, that is the out of food consumption, it's really, I would say very, very big, but it's affecting also the, to me, the, consum the, the consumption for the, for the person at home, because uh, now they have more time, maybe. So they, okay, not you, because you are not a cooker, but, and not me, because I have the same issue, but uh, a lot of people <laughs> is cooking more, are cooking more. <laughs> yeah. For instance. Yeah, that opens another question that I would, I would like to ask you, which is about how COVID, how these lockdowns is affecting all the trends in food and what food is meaning for the people during lockdown, which is the transformation you have seen. To me, let's say the main transformation is that food in the past was, we had a lot of inputs and exploration in the point of sales, in the restaurant, or whatever, and now you don't have it any longer. Simply because when you go to a restaurant, you have to be to keep the mask for a bit, you have the plexiglass uh, on the table, you have to be very careful. When you go to a supermarket, uh, you have to, to plan everything, to plan what you have to buy, everything well in advance. Go there, let's uh, lose uh, less time because you can go whenever you want. You can go there with the full family. It's uh, something that in the past uh, now, I would say, but also at home, now safety is the most important time, the most important factor. So in the past, it was like an exploration, you can try something new and inputs or whatever. Mm, now is just uh, something that uh, you have to be very, very careful. And you're losing all this, uh, all, I would say, all this explosion of senses that you had out of home or in the point of sales or in the restaurant. Because in the past, you had to use all your senses. Now with the mask or whatever, you can't, uh, or the gloves, you can't, actually. I don't know if it's in London, uh -huh. you have the same experience. Uh, the good is that you can, there are less people that are fear to go to the restaurants mm -hmm. or the people move out of London because they are very rich and they have a second uh, residence or a third or a fourth, I guess. Or well, even the, the, the queen is not here. She's in Balmoral or Windsor or whatever. So it's easier to go to a restaurant than before. But I agree with you. In my case, uh, the food has to be with the experience around the food. So for me, the takeaway at home will never be the same as going to a restaurant, even if they deliver it to my door, even if it is warm, nice. Just by taking the things out of a cupboard to put it in my plate, and they become for me something completely different in terms of the experience. What about uh, the people that are starting to cook? because I have some friends that have become like experts. You go to YouTube, when in fact, even in my case, you know, they really take care of us at the company. Uh, so they send us, there is something called great place to work and they are sending us different experiences. And one of them was preparing pizza with all the ingredients from the pizza in a pan. I would never thought that you can do a pizza in a pan. Just to be, and then with the pan, you put it into the, you put it into the oven within the pan. So it was a very uh, surprising yeah. experience. And my children were very, very happy. So what about those people that have decided to play with the ingredients and, and to really have that experience that they cannot have away from home at home? Are you seeing any difference there? Do you think 
it was already there or is something that has exploded because of the COVID? What will be your point of view on that? I think that it's something that exploded because people had more time to spend and they wanted also to, to share something with the family because uh, everybody was at home. So it was a good way also to spend time together and to be also to forget the COVID issue. But it's also possible that it's something that will uh, will stay in the years because we don't know when the COVID uh, when the COVID issues are over, and uh, uh, it's possible that for a lot of people and young uh, is uh, has more time and they want to spend more time with the family and they do something. So uh, in this condition, I think that is something that will happen again. And it's also possible that some person broke the ice, let's say, because they started cooking and maybe we will never become a great chef. But now, after this experience, they like to do something and uh, they they learn uh, two or three things to be done in a decent way that uh, your children can criticize you so much. That's good. <laughs> You should come home and cook them something. Outside. It's not that easy. I'm afraid. So you were mentioning the things that are here to stay after the COVID. Uh, which ones do you think it will? So in the one about investing time with the family for cooking, anything else that you believe? Or are the people graving to come back to the restaurants and have those experiences? To me, I would say, Something that will stay for sure is to use the digital channel to buy the food now. Because a lot of people started to use the online for the retailer or for specific uh, for specific channel. And now again, they break the, the, they break the initial ish barrier. And now they can, and now they found out that it might be much more convenient. This is one point. Another one, yes, you told, I think that uh, until they have time, there are people that now enjoy spending more time with the family on that. And this, to me, it's, um, it's, another, uh, it's another good point. The, then another, another uh, trend that I will uh, be confirmed might be the, the takeaway delivery. Because now delivery, blog, or whatever, all these kind of players, are boosting everywhere in the world because people want to have something good and sophisticated uh, without losing time so obviously if you have to prepare a normal pizza like you with your children uh, you can do it by yourself but if you want something very very sophisticated and you can't go to the restaurant you try this and maybe you can find out that you can do it also in another occasion so to me i don't know how what is the measure I mean, how, man, how much these trends will stay, but I, I'm pretty sure that we'll stay, they will stay. And what do you believe are going to be the implications for our industry, for the insights industry? <laughs> I would say uh, the implication to me in the short term that uh, it's really very difficult to, to understand what's happening. Generally, with the market research, you can try to mirror the reality or try to give some good uh, address for the for the person. But uh, now it's difficult, and I think that the implication will be in the short term we have to watch, observe people much more, and uh, and maybe instead of asking a lot of questions, we can go there. We can go to go to people home or whatever. We can uh, ask them to provide with video, picture, and uh, create some blogs. I think it's much easier for everybody. Then I think that in the future we have to find a new way to track the people' behavior. For sure, we have to work more on digital channel, and we have to find how to be there in the in the flat or. Uh, where people live uh, um, in some way, because in the past we have people that was there as a ethnographic, but now it's impossible. So we have to understand better the situation uh, and we have to find a way. I don't know how, but I think this is the, let's say the, the, the direction. 
And uh, what are the implications in your opinion? Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know what's gonna stay. For me, one of the surprises that before getting somebody to do a questionnaire that was half an hour, uh, it was impossible. Now they are even happy to do half an hour questionnaire because they are bored at home. So that's where I get a bit worried because, you know, suddenly I was, we were investing a lot of efforts to reduce the questionnaires, to be sure they can do it in two seconds. They are very busy. And other people are not busy. Uh, we were looking for how to combine online and offline. And now even my mom is doing things online and she's 80. So I think it's generating a transformation that in the normal industry will take us like five or six years or 10 years has happened in five months. And you can see it. I am worried about thinking this is forever. I do believe that a questionnaire that is 30 minutes is going to still be too long, even if today they are very happy to do that versus cook. <laughs> Let's imagine, at least in my case, <laughs> and that we have to and that we have to differentiate a little bit what to stay one not. I agree with you that we need to use more digital. I also believe that sometimes of the fear that the people have about digital. Uh, has been over, overtaken and it's going to be good for us. What do you think are the bad news? So if those are the good news, which are the bad news for our industry? Well, let's say the bad news is now is that uh, we're much less able to predict uh, the future in the short term. To me, the bad news is that in the short term, our current tool, our current, our current uh, portfolio of tools and our current view is not so fitting with the new reality. So we have to change and uh, it takes time. Nothing okay. terrible. So right? what I mean, will be your advice? <laughs> <laughs> so within that context, that everything is becoming a bit uncertain, which will be your advice for a new joiner to our industry, to the research industry? Hmm. I would say uh, be flexible and curious, but also optimistic, for sure. And this is an attitude. Then, if I think about the, let's say, a career path, uh, I would say try to differentiate your experience, market data, consumer data, shopper data, or whatever, but also to have, uh, to have mainly international roles, international experience, because it, it gives you a wider, um, a, a wider vision of the, of the things, and it helps a lot. Uh, I don't know your so, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, uh, in my case, I, I agree. It's something about trying to be optimistic and always think of the positive and not just focus on the, on the problems, you know. Uh, so would you recommend when you will have kids because you are a very young man, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen uh, in the short term, let's say. Uh, would you recommend to your children uh, to, join the, to join the industry and why? Uh, let's say I don't have children anyhow. If I had some, uh, I would say, uh, let's see what is their attitude in my opinion, because in my opinion, this, this, the, the inside job is fantastic if you are the attitude of an explorer. And in this case, it's the best you can have. But it's also good for a limited period in order to give you a wider vision of the things, to give you the right question. Uh, if you want to have something that is very, always very structured, you want to always stay, whatever, this is not the right job in my opinion. So it depends on the person you are. Thank you, because I was saying no, but then you open a, a big uh, advantage that being in research can give to my children, so I will reconsider. And speaking of reconsider, <coughs> is there anything about your career that you will reconsider, you will have done differently, you had the opportunity? Maybe, but just two things. One is to have also experience on the agency side because I work only for the for great companies, I would say, but it would be good to, be, uh, to see the other part of the, the other side of the moon. And maybe also to have some ex personal experience abroad as you did, because I think that uh, I lived only in Italy, but you told me that uh, 
after London, you are a different person. And it's very good in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm older. That's the only thing. And my English hasn't changed a lot. But thank you for seeing me bigger. So thank you for being with, with us today. I think it has been a very fast half an hour. Is there any question you want to ask me before we say thank you? And we tell everybody we will be here for more questions tomorrow. Um, yes, I think that uh, I would like to have your uh, if you if you think the most important thing that uh, the market research world should uh, should achieve now, what is I mean what is something that is really missing, but as an in, inside industry we should achieve. If you ask me, it's about believing we are an, we are explorers, as you said, instead of data providers or fieldwork providers, and being generous one to another. I think it's good that there is competition, but we should work as a kind of all together, as a kind of lobby or I don't know, lobby is not the right word, sorry, my, my Spanish is not helping me to find the right word, but to really consider uh, ourselves as a space to share. Yes, as a community, that's very right. So that's what I'm missing. What I see is that in terms of scarcity, there is kind of cannibalism, I would say, and I really feel sad about that because there is a lot of talent that might not be there. So how we can help that talent to stay and to flourish is what I will be my wish, if you ask me. And I'm becoming a bit sad, <laughs> which is not the point here, so sorry. <laughs> no, but it, it's really very inspiring. Huh? Thank you, not something like the new methodology. It's like the direction when all of us should go. So very, very good. Yeah. So, Luca, thank you uh, for everybody that is listening to us. And this will be our conversation on food, our questions, if it is a need, if it is a trend, if it is a fashion. Coming from, for me, one of my favorite brands, I can say. I run is one for me. And I can even tell you, we were speaking about that, some of the ads, because for me, it's really a kind of a must when I'm, when I'm cooking. So thank you for being with us today. And for everybody, just contact us tomorrow for join us tomorrow for any question you might have for Luca or for myself. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Really, thank you, Begoya, for this. Very nice.